Good morning, friends, and uh, a very warm welcome today to our service of worship here at St. Mary's Parish Church in Motherwell. A very big welcome to all who are here live in church and to all who are joining us live online and catching up later today or during the week. Welcome to our worship service. Today is the, the, the seventh Sunday after Epiphany, but it's also a very significant Sunday because it's the Sunday which is nearest to Thinking Day for all those in our guiding movement. And so, as we normally do, we celebrate Thinking Day on that nearest Sunday. Uh, Thinking Day is actually the 22nd, which is Tuesday coming. Uh, so, I hope it's a special day on Tuesday for our rainbows, brownies, guides, guiders, and trefoil members. Uh, but today, we're celebrating in church with you. Uh, this year, uh, because of still kind of COVID regulations, we don't have all of our, our units parading, uh, but we do have some of our young folks who come to junior church uh, here in their various uniforms and also our guider leaders as well. And it's lovely to see the different uniforms all represented this morning. So I hope this is a very special service for you. And the theme of this year's, uh, this year's uh, Thinking Day is, can anyone tell me? Did you hear that? You know what, no, 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 what it is now? Our world, our equal future. It's all about our place in God's world and about how we are all one in God's world and how we ought to love one another because we are all one. Our world, our equal future. A very, very important theme for this year's Thinking Day. So, we're going to have lots of members of the Rainbows, Brownies, Guides, uh, Guiders, Trefoil taking part in the service today. And it's my pleasure, first of all, to invite uh, Ellie and Lucy to come and lead us in the call to worship. Hopefully the microphones are at a good level for you guys. Perfect. Oh, maybe not. Let's sort it. May God be gracious to us and, make, and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. That his way may be known upon earth, his saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations of the world be glad and worship you with joy, for you are a God of love, of justice, and of peace. Let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The world is a beautiful and fruitful place. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. And may all people on earth, younger and older, honour and praise him. Thank you so much, girls. Let us honour and let us praise God and this service in our opening hymn this morning. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, the King of creation. Let us worship God.
And now let's join together our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, you are the, the creator of this magnificent universe in which we live and in which we grow. And we thank you for everything, Lord, that we enjoy on this earth. We thank you for all the, the great gifts that we have, especially the gifts of family and friends and friendship and love. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for the gift of your love, your love seen most clearly in Jesus, your Son, who came to this earth that first Christmas to show us what love is all about, who died that first Easter in love for all of us that we might have forgiveness, and who rose again in love to bring love to our daily lives, each and every moment of each and every day. Lord, we have so many things to, to thank you for, to, to be grateful to you for, and we come today with glad and grateful hearts. Lord, we know that none of us are perfect people, that all of us, younger and older, make mistakes. We do and say silly things, and we sometimes don't do the things that we should do. But Lord, we thank you that you are always forgiving through Jesus, and that you always, always help us to do better the next time. Lord, as we gather together today, we thank you for this special time for all in our guiding movement, for our rainbows, for our brownies, for our guides, for our guider leaders, for those in our Trefoil Guild. Uh, we thank you that this is a special time for them as they celebrate Thinking Day, which is coming up very soon. May this service, Lord, as we celebrate Thinking Day, be a, a very special one for each and for all of them. But may we remember too with our friends in the guiding movement, that we are all part of one big family that isn't just here in Motherwell, but stretches throughout the whole, whole world. Thinking Day asks us to remember that we are part of a worldwide family. Lord, we are part of your family. Millions and millions of people throughout the world who live in many different countries all brothers and sisters to us. Lord, may we remember and celebrate that this Thinking Day Sunday. And Lord, as we bring you our prayers today, we also say together the family prayer that Jesus has taught everyone in the world to say, and that all his disciples say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, always a very special part in our Thinking Day service is the opportunity for our young people in our Rainbows, Brownies, Guides, uh, and our Guiders and Trefoil members to renew their promises. And the, the first promise that's going to be done today is by Emily Kidd on behalf of all of the Rainbows. Now, the Rainbows have a different promise. I'm going to read it out first. Emily, so that everyone will know what you're about to say. So if we have the next slide up, that'd be great. So Emily's promise on behalf of all the rainbows uh, here and at home is I promise that I will do my best to think about my beliefs and to be kind and helpful. Lovely, lovely words. And Emily, are you happy to come and lead all of the rainbows in that promise? Right height for you. Thank you. 
I promise that I will do my best to think about my beliefs and to be kind and helpful. Fantastic. I think that deserves a round of applause there. And that was on behalf of all of our lovely rainbows in the church. And, well, it's a bit easier for everyone else because rainbows have their own uh, special promise, but the, the brownies, the guides, the guiders, and the trefoil guild all say the same promise, which is, I promise that I will do my best to be true to myself and develop my beliefs to serve the queen and my community to help other people and to keep the brownie guide law. So I'm going to ask Sophie, Ailey, Hazel, and Claire, who represent the different organizations uh, at different age levels to come and lead us, and hopefully we can get the microphones. Maybe the two tallest round one, uh, and maybe uh, the next round the other. So you're all coming out together. So I might need a wee bit lower for the girls. And I see if you all take a step forward, guys. Don't be shy of the microphones. <laughs> Claire's been a bit shy there. Just come for, as forward as you can. That is brilliant. I'll give you a wee countdown, one, two, three, four, and then you can all say together the, the joint promise. One, two, three. I promise that I will do my best to do my duty to the Queen. To, oh, be, to develop my beliefs, keep on, keep on, to develop my beliefs. and to help other people, other people, and to keep the brown and guide law. We've got law. I still did the old one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like, that goes with it, doesn't it? That's, that's <laughs> the old one. Well, we heard. I think we heard that then. The old and new mixed together. <laughs> that's a good thing for churches. A, a melding of old and new. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought we were hearing slightly different words coming to get together there. Thank you so much. And that was on behalf of all of our uh, Brownies Guides, Guiders, and Treffel Guild members. And the Treffel Guild uh, are the oldest group, uh, so yeah, it's no surprise that you guys still remember a different promise. Now, one of the, the lovely things in church is to be able to celebrate uh, people's service. Uh, we do this uh, for uh, elders, and we do it uh, for uh, various other members in the church. In fact, we are presenting long service certificates to elders next week. But I just want to say that since our last in-church Thinking Day service, uh, some of our guiding leaders have received long service certificate. So I'll read them out uh, and then we can give a wee congratulations at the end. I think they've already received the, the certificates, so they're not presenting this morning. But Rona Maguire uh, from the Six Brownies, Monday, five years. Uh, Lynn Lowe from the Six Guides, Tuesday, 30 years. Laura Forbes, Six Guides, Tuesday, 10 years. Hazel Graham, Six uh, Brownies, Monday, 30 years. And we have Leslie Shearer from the Six uh, Rainbows Red Squirrels, five years. And Claire Scobie from the Six Rainbows Red Squirrels, again, uh, five years. Gillian Davison from the Six Guides, Thursday, five years. And Isabel Johnson from the Six Guides, Tuesday, wait for this one, 50 years. <laughs> Huge congratulations to all uh, of our leaders. We give so much of their time uh, with our girls in the church. And God bless in all the work that you're doing and continue to do in the days ahead. And uh, it will be lovely to, to have everyone back because I believe uh, someone whispered in my ear this morning that next year is actually a, a very special year. It's 100 years of the guiding 
the guides next year. So it'll be lovely uh, when hopefully COVID restrictions are over and we're able to have uh, our organizations back to celebrate that huge, huge milestone. But this year is a, is a special year because I don't know if you've noticed it yet, I've seen that, that, uh, that Thinking Day is actually on the 22nd, right? So this year, if you, if you work it out, this year it's going to be the 22nd of the 2nd, February, 22. So it's 22 to 22. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Maybe not that amazing, but, uh, but there you go. Uh, that amuses me. Uh, 22 to 22, when Thinking Day finally comes around on Tuesday, it is uh, one of these years. It's all the twos together. And uh, what we're going to do now is, before our young folks leave, is we're going to sing a song that often appears in our Thinking Day services because it's all about being one, coming together as one. And the hymn is, Bind Us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Now, our young folks are going to go off to junior church. I think uh, that includes everyone, but uh, Ailey, you're, you're going to be leading us in our prayers later on, so maybe uh, we'll get Ian to come out and to get you during the offering so you can do our prayers of intercession later. But that is absolutely brilliant. Have a wonderful time at junior church, and when Thinking Day comes on the 22nd, have a wonderful Thinking Day to all of our, our young folks and all the folks too in the guiding movement. God bless.
And now I'm going to ask our choir to lead us in the anthem. I got it in the wrong order, in the order of service here. So if the guys can just skip ahead. Brilliant. Thank you very, very much. Our anthem for today is For the Beauty of the Earth. Thank you so much uh, to Ronald and the choir. That was beautiful. It's one of my favorite hymns and a, a perfect lead in today to our Bible readings from the Old and New Testaments. Just to set the context of our first reading, it comes, it's going to be read to us uh, by Denise. Uh, and the context of this is the very opening chapter of the Bible. And it uh, it begins uh, with God creating the heavens and the earth. And what follows is a kind of almost like hymn-like poetic description uh, of the creation. Uh, it's not a literal seven days, but it's a, the seven days are like a poetic form uh, to, to show us that God created everything. And the number seven in Hebrew thought was the perfect number, God creating the perfect creation uh, in this poetic seven-day uh, structure. So, what we're going to hear is just a little bit of that, that uh, reading today. We're going to hear the opening verse about God creating the heavens and the earth, and then Denise is going to read to us about day five and day six. So, pass over to Denise. Let us hear the Word of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems 
and it moves about in it according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit, fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything has a breath of life in it. I give you every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thank you so much, Denise, uh, for reading that part from the creation story. And now we're going to move into the New Testament and to hear a small section from one of the, the little letters towards the end of the New Testament. It's the first letter of John, chapter 4, verse 7, and it's a, a, a passage primarily about love, love that God has built into this universe that he has created, his own love for us. And Isabel is going to read for us. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Thank you so much, Isabel. It's my joy now to pass over to Hazel to lead us in our reflections today. Good morning. You get a different view from, from up here than sitting over there, but it's lovely to be with you all this morning. Before I begin, let's have a, a word of prayer. Let's, let's pray. Loving God, thank you for your word to us, your word that became flesh and lived among us, your word that is alive with us now through your Holy Spirit. 
Lord, speak to us afresh today. Speak to us as we reflect on your holy word. And Lord, may my words and all our thoughts be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Bryce mentioned with the children, while the children were all here, this Tuesday is World Thinking Day. And this time, two years ago, teenagers from the Girl Guides and the Girl Scouts across a hundred countries were asked what concerned them most and what they wanted to change about the world. Thousands of young people were asked and their number one topic was the environment. So this year for the guide movement, they begin a three year journey to become environmentally conscious leaders. Now that's quite a goal and I'm certainly hoping that it's not just the guiding movement that are going to work towards that goal. I'm hoping and praying that we will all take on that responsibility and that we will all try to help in our world today. We heard in our first reading that creation, God was happy with what he'd created. It was good. In fact, in verse 31, it says, indeed, it was very good. And God has entrusted us with this world. My reflection theme today is based on both our readings. And it's on love, a love for creation and a love for each other. For me, the story of creation shows God's love for us. Right at the outset, at the very beginning, God's love for us is shown. We're made in God's image. God created this beautiful world for us. Rivers and seas teeming with fish and creatures, land filled with flowers and vegetation, trees and mountains, waterfalls and beaches, animals and birds, butterflies and hills, the list goes on. But each was lovingly created and for our good. So what about this beautiful world of ours. Let's look at a couple of pictures of Scotland. The first picture was when Alfie, our little dog, and I were out walking. The other day, I spotted, probably for one of the first times, despite the number of times that I do the, the same walk with the dog, I spotted this waterfall. And it really is beautiful. I think sometimes, I know speaking for myself, sometimes we just take God's creation for granted, but it's beautiful. Bryce, last weekend, was further north in Lewis. And if you just look at this beach, I believe it's Reef Beach, a beautiful place, and I'm very impressed with the, the seaweed love heart, which just beautifully tied in with what we were hoping to, to share uh, today. And then again, if you look at the next slide, we've got the Kalanish stones. Again, just look at the beauty that God has created. Now, in Scotland, we have lots of guides who want to take care of the beauty of this world. They want to look after it. And we've got lots of resources in this country, in Scotland. We've got great transport systems. We've got healthcare. 
We've got education. We've got employment rules to protect the vulnerable. We've got charities. We've got so much in this country. And we're able to go and enjoy places on holiday and just being able to see the beauty of God's creation. And as a country, and hopefully as individuals too, I hope that we're trying to make the world a better place and to take care of the beauty that surrounds us. Some of the things we might be thinking about, we recycle clothes and toys. We support charity shops. We get hybrid and electric cars lowering emissions. What about the reusable coffee cups and the recyclable shopping bags? I'm sure you can think of other ways that we can make sure we keep the beauty of our creation. Yet, there's still so much more that could be done. So that was Scotland. But there's guides and scouts across the world, not just in Scotland. So let's look at another country. Kenya in Africa has a strong guide movement too. It's been going since 1920. But sadly, they have different experiences than we do. Kenya is one of the countries where there's inequality. Kenya is beautiful. God made it beautiful. But Kenyan education is not available for all. Transport systems can be inadequate. Roads are not always maintained. There's greater poverty and climate change is greater than it is here. They have droughts and floods which cause health problems and few hospitals to help them. Our daughter, Laura, had the privilege to go to Uganda and Kenya a few years ago. She was there volunteering with a charity and was coaching netball. So I thought this morning, we've seen the, the beauty of Scotland. Let's look at the beauty of Kenya. This first picture today is the day she arrived in a minibus. And you can perhaps see the conditions of the road. That great big pothole was exceptionally dangerous. And thankfully, they arrived in daylight and could be directed by the people to uh, get to their destination. Perhaps when we moan about potholes here, we should maybe think of that, that picture. And then what about their shops? If we just look at the amazing fresh fruit and vegetables available on the roadside. But yet you can also see how dry and arid the ground is. These countries are experiencing the effects of climate change so much more than we are. They have those droughts, they have extreme rains. Their workers are poor and they're the ones who are providing cheaply produced clothing for capitalist, wealthy corporate organizations in the first world country. Again, we see more inequality. And then what about school? Is this like DL High School down the road? You'll note that the teaching is outdoors. There's school uniform. That was all the children had. They only had school uniform and if they were fortunate, they had one other set of clothing. But attendance at school was a privilege and all the children were keen to be at school and to learn. 
I think I'm going to have to send my 16-year-old out just to appreciate the education system. I also think of our own children and the number of, maybe it's different hoodies or different shoes that they have, but they have choices. They have lots of different choices of what to wear. If we have a look at the next picture, you'll see the bare feet. Very few had shoes. And those that did were worn out. Laura, when she went out, took lots of old trainers from her, some of her friends. She and so many of her friends had pairs that they didn't wear. They'd maybe outgrown them, or maybe they just didn't like them anymore, but they were still perfectly good. These young people loved receiving any gift of clothing or of shoes. Our next picture is at a school for blind children. Now most of these children were, were orphans or in many cases abandoned because of their lack of sight. These children weren't going to be able to work they needed greater support, and generally, they were a cost to their families, which their parents or grandparents couldn't afford. It's so sad, but these children were happy children. These next two pictures show what Laura went out to do. It shows the teams in action. Now, for those of us who are familiar with netball. This isn't how you would normally play. We'd all be in a school or a community hall. We'd be kitted out in the new trainers. We'd have special shorts and a top and then we'd have bibs. We'd have umpires. We'd have whistles. We'd have scoreboards. The works. But it appears a very unequal world. Yet, does it have to be? Is there another way? Our second reading this morning tells us a way. First John tells us that love comes from God. And it tells us that we, each of us, are commanded to love one another. So is caring for our world, looking after God's world that he so lovingly gave us, and caring for our neighbors, is that not a way of showing our love for one another? The next slide, which I have to be honest, is one of my favorites. In fact, it might even be my favorite. Because I think, I think we've missed one. We're going on. Do you want to? Yep. This one, this one here is my favorite. Because I think it shows love. The children formed a special bond with Laura. And she loved them. Laura was a Mzunga, a white person. Now, there were only 10 people from across the United Kingdom on the trip. And Laura was the only one with blonde hair. The children were fascinated. We have multiple pictures of children plaiting her hair. And as you can see in the picture, they were playing with her hair as she put her head out of the minibus as they were saying farewell. These kids loved the visitors who spent time with them, encouraged them, had shown them love. And the visitors, Laura received love in return. You can just see the love and the joy in all their faces. Now, sadly, this morning, I can't see the smiles 
behind your masks. But I hope that you are smiling. I hope you're smiling because you too can feel the love and that you're grateful for that we are so fortunate. You're smiling because we are not in that situation. Smiling too because we are loved and that because of that love, we are able to love others. But equally, I hope that we're all feeling challenged. Challenged because we have a responsibility. A responsibility to care for our world, to protect our environment, and to think about our use of the many resources that we have, to be less wasteful, and to realize the impact that our actions are having here, but also overseas. We're challenged and we're commanded to love one another. It's very clear in the Bible there are multiple verses, multiple verses where Jesus says, love one another. And do you remember the greatest commandments that Jesus taught us? Love God first. Love God with all our heart, our soul, and mind. And the second, like that, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. To close, I hope and pray that our love for one another will bring about equality across our world. I pray our love will bring hope and joy to those living in poverty, in places where there's drought, famine, or floods, and that in the not too distant future, we will be able to say that we are living in our world and that we all do have an equal future. Amen. We're now going to sing a hymn that may not be familiar to everyone. It's called A New Commandment and the choir are going to sing it through once first of all and you can all get the tune uh, and join in the second time that we sing it. I hope you enjoy this hymn, A New Commandment I Give Unto You.
now we're going to dedicate our offerings and our lives. Let us pray. Creator God, generous God, we thank you for the universe in which we live and have our being. And we thank you once more for love, love that you have for us and the love that you give us to share with one another and yourself. Lord, as we come today appreciative of all that you have given us in the world, we bring our offerings. We bring to your table today our gifts of money. Some of us too give through our uh, standing orders and we dedicate all of the money that we collect in this congregation and ask, Lord, that it might be blessed for the furtherance of your work here and beyond Motherwell. Lord, we also today, though, are reminded uh, through our reflections that in our world there are so many uh, who suffer. And we pray today that we might give of our very best, of our money, of our resources, of our time, and our talents, to make not just this church, this town, this country, but our world a better, more equal, just, and loving place with your help and support. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a little uh, we noticed to the congregation, uh, we said over the last couple of weeks that Gillian's father had died, but just a wee reminder that uh, for those who want to go to the service, uh, Sandy's service is tomorrow afternoon, and that's at South Lanarkshire Crematorium at two o'clock. Uh, there is a, a, a link via the internet for the service, and if anyone was interested in obtaining that link, if you uh, contact me and I'll be able to direct you uh, to uh, Gillian for the link. So that's Sunday service tomorrow, and we remember the family. Also, very sadly, this week, I've heard of the, the death of one of our, our members, Mrs. Nan McMillan of 3 Annan Street, and folks will be saddened to hear of Nan's passing. But we thank God for her life and her service, for all that she was and is and continues to be. And we ask for God's peace, for God's comfort and strength to be with Nan's family at this time. Obviously, I have no details of a, a funeral service as yet, but I will let you know uh, next week when I have more details there. But we remember the family. But before our prayers of intercession, which, is, uh, which are good to be led for us uh, by Ailey, I'm just going to say a little prayer for, for Nan's family and for Gillian's. Lord, we know that Sometimes in life we go through sad and, and difficult times. Sometimes we travel even through the valley of deepest darkness, which can be a valley of the shadow of death. And Lord, for all whom we know today, going through that valley, we pray your peace, your comfort, your strength. We continue to pray for Gillian and her family and for Nan McMillan's family, that they might know that you, the Good Shepherd, are with them every step of their journey, to bring them light and hope. And Lord, these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
and to continue our prayers for others, our intercessory prayers, I'm going to invite Ellie to come forward and to lead us now. You can just use the reader's desk, Ellie, if that's okay. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for our friends here at St Mary's, and thank you for our friends in the rainbows, brownies and guides both here at St Mary's and those across the world. Lord, as we reflect on World Thinking Day, help us to think of others all across the world who are less fortunate than us. Those who don't have a home to those who don't have a home to call their own, those who don't have a family to love and support them, those those may not even have food to eat, and those who don't have opportunities to learn. Lord, please help them. And Lord, help us to remember our impact on the environment. Make us more informed to make the right decisions because our decisions, our decisions can affect many. And Lord, help us to remember that those who need your help are everywhere. They're in Motherwell, they're in Scotland, they're all over the world. They're in our church today. Lord, help us, help us to help others to show your love to everyone that we meet. And Lord, help us to never forget that you are always with us and all that we say and do. Amen. Thank you so much. That was lovely. And we're going to finish with a, a lovely song this morning about the world in which we live and about the need to support and love and care for one another in this God's world. Beauty for brokenness. Let us worship God.
teas and coffees, refreshments are available in the hall after the service for those who wish to stay for further fellowship. But after our benediction, uh, as we leave the church either for the halls or to go home, uh, Ronald will play for us our closing voluntary for today, Lord for the years. But now the benediction. Let us go each one in love, to love God and to love our fellow human beings. Let us love our world around us. And in our love, let us work together for an equal future for all, here and everywhere. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Thank you.